But yeah, Wes is running for county council in a hotly contested race with lots of petition candidates. Um, and he, he needs our support. So Wes, would you take some time to come up and speak to us and tell us sure, what you need? Like to and, um, and what? If they would like to know some things. Yeah. Well, I would, because I haven't heard you. It's, yeah. it's not just some of the things that you're talking about at the state level. Um, and of course, you and I have had this conversation at nausea about how that so often the um, the county level and the town level in South Carolina is really overlooked. And what that does is that gives those rascals carte blanche to basically do what they want. And what I'd like to do is share with you some of the things that take place in our county. Um, in Lexington County, we have a chairman that works for the Lexington Chamber of Commerce. The vice chairman is the supposed economic development director for the town of Lexington. And he works under the mayor of course for the town of Lexington, but that same person is also the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce. And we have multiple, multiple family members in high paid positions in our county. Those family members happen to be family members of them and other elected officials. Now me saying this, and this isn't the first time I've said it publicly or privately, but it's going to step on their toes. And of course I, I felt the wrath. Um, I'm the only candidate in uh, this race, and I've been told by a couple of reporters that it's the most contested race in the state. Uh, it's five of us in it. Um, not like some uh, school board races that have 12 folks in them, but um, <laughs> five's a plenty. Uh, I've been threatened, had my family threatened. I've uh, tried to be bribed, tried to be cajoled, and the folks on council know it's not going to work with me because I'm running for our families and our small businesses, plain and simple. A lot of the things that I talk about, some folks today might think sound kind of corny. So be it. I plead guilty. That's me. That's who I am. I still believe in the greatness of our country, the greatnesses of our state, and our communities. Um, a lot of times at the county level, you'll see folks do things like what I'm about to share with you, like borrow $32 million the week after the Republican primary to bail out the zoo. But then you can stand on Main Street Monday through Friday at 5 o'clock and you can walk faster than you can drive. They'll fund millions and millions of dollars into an airport to nowhere in the lower half of our county. And I have family that live in that community, so I'm not disparaging that particular community. But if you ever go out there, you'll see that it's nothing but a strip of pavement and a cow pasture. Mm -hmm. There's not even a tower out there. Okay? One person on council told me that, well, we need to, to build that up to, to have our corporate clients come in. The first thing I thought about was obviously the Columbia Airport, where you have, as they are landing, an entire concourse where a huge UPS airplane is on one end and a huge FedEx airplane is on the other. Now, which one do you think is going to impress a corporate client more? Obviously, it would be the Columbia Airport and not the cow pasture with the strip of pavement in it. Not through the internet. <laughs> so, this is the mentality that infests our county council. And, quite frankly, our town council. How long is that runway? I don't believe it's long enough for a large jet. I don't think so. And that's part of their argument they want to link with. But, but Chuck Whipple, he's got, he's got a whole aeronautical quarter plan and that's going to be one of the there indeed are a lot of plans bookcase in and aeronautical the, the biggest plan that i'm aware of is for them to put their hand further into your pocket um, and it's needless anybody that studies the budget knows that the last two tax increases were absolutely unnecessary the only thing the only thing that they can use to justify it is the continued bloated growth of our county government now a lot of you may or may not know, I'm also a paramedic with the county, with a spotless record, by the way, of a decade of my life serving you and your families. I'm proud of that. I'm a working guy. I'm not one of the wealthy guys showing up with bags of money treating it like it's a popularity contest in this race. I'm out knocking on doors every day and I'm putting up signs every day because they keep getting torn down. That's okay. Those folks that do that just don't realize how they're motivating me. So I would encourage them to keep doing that. But my race in particular is attracted statewide attention simply because of where we're running and because of the recent issue with the town council member of our fair town in Lexington. And I would say to each of you that I understand that it's not just him that's involved. He's just the fellow that got caught. And unfortunately, it goes much deeper than that. And that type of corruption, blatant corruption, quite frankly, in my own opinion, um, with them using our tax dollars to give their children and the children of other elected officials high paying jobs with very little experience, by the way, at our expense. It's just absolutely wrong. Borrowing $32 million to bail out the zoo when we need our streets fixed 
or we need to give a rebate back to the citizens, it's absolutely immoral. And there's nobody that's willing to stand up and say that. They're increasing every year the burden on our families and our small businesses, and let's be honest, our churches. Very few folks will stand in public and say that today, but if you can't take care of your family, you can't take care of your business, you can't take care of your church. Plain and simple. Nor can you give to other ministries or other charities here in our state. So the, the horrible things that we hear about on the state level and the national level are indeed that horrible. We do have indeed some control at our state level and hopefully on November 7th we're going to have a little bit more control because we're going to get some more conservatives in the House and the Senate. But all throughout our state at the county and the town level they have been given carte blanche because so often we overlook that. And I've had a, that conversation with several of you here in the audience tonight. But it's because of our focus. And so what I would say to each of you is whether you can support me or not, find somebody that you can support and get involved. And by that, I mean knock on doors. Get a voter list and start calling. Donate money. If you can't donate, raise money. Okay? Get your kids. Get your Sunday school class involved. Bring the folks on a Saturday morning and show up and walk through the neighborhoods. And I promise you, it will be invigorating and fun. Because those of you who have been out and talking to your neighbors, you realize that folks who aren't even politically involved, and I'll admit I'm a political nerd. I've been a political activist most of my adult life. But even those folks that are just struggling to make a living and pay their high taxes and raise their kids right and teach them to be good Americans, they understand that at the root of our democracy in South Carolina, with this recent election debacle, something is amiss. They know it. And when you talk to them and you begin to share with them how that your state folks, and specifically in my case, your county council folks, are wasting their money annually by the millions. And it's not just Lexington County, but I'm only running for county council in Lexington County District 3. You get their attention and you motivate them and you, you draw them in because they want to know. So I would encourage each of you, putting my political activist hat back on and not the candidate hat, get involved. If you think you're involved now, I would say do more. There's all kinds of conservative candidates all across our state, from the school boards, county councils, town councils, the House, and the Senate, and we can all name those names pretty much in here. And that's because we know who they are, and they're out there knocking on doors every day. Most importantly, if you can't work for them, the least you can do is pray for them, and that, that's incredibly important. And I really think that's the number one thing in our nation today, is we need to make sure and, and lift those folks up. Because I know most of us that's been involved in politics a long time in our state, we understand how that our state has earned the reputation of being a bare knuckle, close fisted blood sport called politics. And that's because that's what South Carolina is about. By saying that, I'm telling you, it's hard work. It really is. It's hard work, but it's worth every single step I take. I don't regret a day my decision to make this room because I'm sharing things with the public that our county council is hiding from them that they need to know. Just as Tybert was talking about a minute ago, there's absolutely no reason at all if our current House Speaker doesn't have anything to hide, he should open his books to the public, not just to the House Ethics Commission or to our Attorney General's office, and let any and everybody examine them. Plain and simple, if you don't have anything to hide, let's see it. I doubt that'll happen, but we'll see. But anyways, back to my race, I can tell you about all sorts of things they spend their money on, and I, I know Deb probably is familiar with some of these things with the school board. Golf and Brothers, liquor decanters, wooden and gray pin sets, leather bound portfolios. So many folks don't even know about that. Lobbyists, lobbying organizations. I'm talking about in the hundreds of thousands of dollars annually. This is old Lexington County now. Okay? Spending $300,000 with equipment on an ambulance when you can get two for the price of one. The new ambulances are dangerous. I can't even hardly do my job and treat patients on those. They get half the gas mileage when diesel's approaching five bucks a gallon. Maintenance cost is almost double of what the other ones are. And it, it, it's all through different departments. It's not just my department. I mean, you've got wasted equipment in the Sheriff's Department. Up until recently, you had the Sheriff's Department with a uh, public liaison consultant for 15 grand a year. And, you know, that, that fellow got caught in a recording that he shouldn't have been doing. But it's still money, and that was our tax dollars. It's in every department, my friends. So. Get involved, support our conservative candidates, support me if you can. I still need donations. I still need folks to come knock on doors with me. And I promise you, if you knock on doors with me, you'll have a lot of fun. Because it's, it's always great to get out and talk to people. So God bless you and please remember you in my prayers.